G'day everyone and welcome to this episode, episode number six of the Reboot Your Thinking podcast. This is the podcast that reimagines mindset, mindfulness and mental health from the perspective of someone who gives and gets therapy. Today's session, today's session, today's episode um, is inspired by a question from one of you, from a listener and this is Jesse's question. Hey Nick, I've been a fan of your work for a long time now and I really value your opinions and insights because of your professional and life experience. I see and listen to a lot of therapy life coaching podcasts and it always seems to be focused on um, healing and problems. But I wonder, what's your opinion, what's your professional approach of when things are good, what do you do? Okay, so uh, Jesse's question basically is, you know, what do we do when things are good? What about when things are good? And it's a really good question, um, Jesse, and I'm really glad you sent it in. So thank you for that. Um, but I, I think the the power of this question is comes from, you know, a lot of the work that I do is with people who are either in crisis or close to it or you know, they've, they've been dealing with something that makes them feel like they're performing at a suboptimal level, right? So things aren't that great um, or things weren't that great in the past and it's still affecting them today. But this is a really good question because recovery is the goal here, right? <laughs> recovery is the goal and being good and feeling good is obviously what I'm trying to do um, with clients and what my clients are always trying to do for themselves and trying to look for themselves. So there's a couple of things that I think um, are worth talking about today in this topic of, you know, what about when it's good? What do we do when things are good? And the first thing I think is really just to understand what good means to you, you know, by asking yourself what you think is a good situation or a good feeling or a good sense of your life? Like what's a good period of your life? What has been a good period of your life and what would be if you if you can't really relate to that, which sadly a lot of people can't, right? So the first thing is your, your definition of good is important here. I think you need to identify your, your personal definition of what is good so that you can recognize it when it happens. <laughs> even if you're not in it right now, you know, what would be good? What What is the expectation here? What uh, What is the goal here? And for a lot of people, they just can't really even get, excuse me, get their, their head around that. Like, I don't know what's good because I've never felt it. You know, I don't know what's good because I don't know how far I can go from where I am now in this bad place. Um, you know, so so that definition of good is is really, really important first step right and then i think it's also important to pay attention to the emotions that are that are around that that surround that that trigger those feelings you know take the time to tune into your emotions and notice when you're feeling content when you are feeling happy when you are feeling fulfilled um first of all are you feeling those things but then secondly when you do like what's going on around you? What what are the triggers for that? What are the antecedents for that? Um, what things, you know, when things are going well, we often take those positive emotions for granted. And, and so it's important to recognize them and savor them. Even if you don't feel them that much, it's still important to to not take them for granted. And to know that, you know, Things have been crook in the past, but now they're doing better. Things are doing better now, but they could still be better still. You know, that kind of timeline of, of emotion and understanding and feeling those emotions is, is a really important way to establish, first of all, is this good? Like, I, am I in a place where I want to be? Um, and, and if I am, how do I stay here, right? A lot of it comes back to like everything comes back to gratitude too, you know, being grateful when things are good. It's important to cultivate a sense of gratitude, you know, taking some time each day to reflect on what you're thankful for and express gratitude for those things. And, and I've talked about this a million times. I won't bang on about it again today. But when you write down what you're grateful for, you are more grateful for it. That is a scientific 
truth. That's not my opinion. That's not woo-woo stuff. That is scientific opinion, that it's important to write things down, to literally pen and paper, write things down and, and you'll become more grateful for those things that you say you are grateful for. Um, to celebrate little wins along the way. You know, a lot of this stuff is the same sort of content that we've talked about before because it works and it's a, a staple of what I do. Um, but celebrating little victories is really important. It's easy to focus on what we haven't accomplished. But when things are going well, it's important to celebrate our successes, right? So that includes just taking the time to acknowledge our wins, our accomplishments, and, and give yourself credit for the hard work that you've done that has gotten you there. You know, these things aren't luck. You don't win a raffle and then suddenly you're happy. Uh, you know, it's there's a lot of work goes on here. There's a lot of construction that goes on here that you're responsible for. And if you're not celebrating the success of that or the victories of that, then it's very difficult to see the bigger picture of when things are really, really, really good uh, and what to do in those times as well. Positive self-talk is important in these, in these moments too. You know, when things are good, it's easy to slip into negative self-talk, thinking things like, you know, this can't last. I don't deserve this. I always fuck this up from here. This is, you know, I, I'm just waiting for it to fail. All of those things that we say to ourselves almost guarantee that it will, you know. So instead of that, to use positive self-talk to reinforce the good things in your life and, and build your confidence, you know. And, and out of those things comes an increased resilience. Positive self-talk leads to self-acceptance, leads to leads to resilience that you can't sort of get there without that right so while it's important to enjoy the good times it's also important to build resilience for when things might not be so good right um practicing self-care maintaining a strong support system developing healthy coping mechanisms so that you're better equipped to handle challenges when they arise this work is much better done when the sun's shining you know, when things are good, um, it's a lot easier to prepare for battle when you're not in the battle, right? And and all of those fortifications that you build around yourself through self-care, through self-compassion, through self-awareness, um, self-acceptance, maintaining a good support system, developing good, healthy coping mechanisms, all of those things mean that when the sun stops shining or when it gets a little bit cloudy down the track, that we are better equipped to deal with that. We're ready, right? Setting goals is an important thing that we can do when things aren't so good too. Like when things are good, it's a great time to set goals for the future. And like I've mentioned, you know, a few times now and several times really, um, these goals need to be manageable. They need to be, you know, um, realistic. They need to be time sensitive. They need to be, you know, small and, and manageable, attainable things, right? These goals don't need to be the big goal of your life, the big five-year plan. God, five-year plans, it's just such a waste of energy when you're trying to go day to day and then you've got this big thing hanging over, hanging over your head of your own construction that you can't possibly see that you can attain because of today's challenges, you know? Deal with today, just for today, what are you going to do? And then what am I going to do tomorrow? That's it. That's about all I'd like you to think about for my own future, you know. And then after that, I'll work it out as we go, one day at a time. But this is this is a really big underlying factor through through my life and through a lot of my clients' stuff that I see as well, you know. Think about what you want to accomplish, you know. Create a plan to make that happen. Do that while the sun's shining. Having something to work towards can help you maintain your momentum and keep the good times going. So it's not just a uh, it's not just an imp important thing to recognise that when you're in these good times. But how do we how do we keep them going? How do we build momentum? How do we put routine in place so that it is a practice for us? It's not it's not a fluke. You're not winning a raffle. This is this is the work you've done. This is the prep. You know, when things are good, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and, and forget to be present too. And that's why practicing mindfulness can help you stay grounded and, and appreciate the good things in your life like even more. So, you know, 
mindfulness is often the answer for me and it certainly is in this too when you're good first of all when things are good first of all you know it takes some mindfulness and some self-awareness to go oh things are good right things aren't aren't crap at the moment i'm doing well things are falling into place you know everything might not be coming up millhouse but at least you know you you're moving in the right direction so once you've got the mindfulness of okay things are, are doing well then the mindfulness of well, here's how I feel today. How am I going to feel this afternoon? What can I do today so that tomorrow is better again? These are the, these are the important things, right? Um, embracing change is a good sort of thing to keep in mind when things are good. You know, good times can often lead to feeling complacent. Um, but it's important to remember that change is inevitable. Now, bad times aren't inevitable, but change is like... It's things are going to change. And if you're not ready for that change, then it can be a negative experience. You don't even have to be ready for the change that's coming. Just be ready for change in general. You know, things, things are going to be different. Every day, people are different. Every day, a relationship changes. Every day, we change as people, right? So embrace that change and use the good times to prepare for whatever is coming next, um, it's it's a very simple process. Oh, it's a very simple kind of theme, this embracing change, but some people just do not do well with it at all. Um, and I think maybe, like I, I've never had a real issue with that. I don't know, that's not been a part of my um, head noise makeup. Change has always been okay for me. It's the constant that's the problem for me. So, you know, um, that consistency sometimes gets very boring for me and I, you know, that's... Maybe that's the attic brain, but yeah, um, embracing change is a very important thing to focus on when things are good. So it's just positivity in general, right? Not toxic positivity, not being positive at all costs, but when things are good, it's, in, it's important to spread positivity and, and lift others up, right? Sharing, sharing your good fortune, <laughs> not your good luck, but sharing your good fortune with others um, might help them find their own reasons to feel good now your job isn't to make anyone else happy that's not what i'm saying but sharing that but if you can share your good fortune and in a positive way and positive messaging positive communications and that in turn just helps someone else then why wouldn't you you know that's 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 a positive thing that's a good thing for all of us this is the time too that maybe is the time to take risks so a lot of my clients are risk averse. They are not risk takers. And, you know, you could argue that their inability to take a risk or change the storyline um, has perpetuated trauma in their life. And, and sometimes that has sort of bitten them on the bum too, this inability to take risks. Now, I also have a bunch of clients who, who live with addiction who have no problem taking risks. And, and so that's, that's the zero or 100. And there is a 50 in here, right? And the 50 is when, when things are good, it's, it's easy to play it safe, right? But taking a calculated risk can help you continue to grow and continue to improve and not just stop and get stuck, not just stay where you are. Right? So think about how do you step out of your comfort zone and try new things because when the sun's shining, when things are good, it, it is the time to try new things. You know, It is the time potentially to take a risk that you wouldn't take otherwise. Um, yeah. um, finding purpose is, is an important sort of thing to think about when things are good as well. Now, I, I have to do a... a podcast an episode on on purpose because i think it's such a bastardized thing by so many people that pedal they're going you know they they're going to sell you your purpose on instagram or whatever it might be but um i, I just don't think finding your purpose singular is is that important you know i i think finding your purposes and uh, you know, finding finding what is joyous and what brings you happiness is important. Um, but too often, I think we align purpose with commercial interests, purpose with salary, purpose with promotion, purpose with status. And I don't think those things necessarily are are the same thing. But just speaking of purpose, like when things are good, it can be easy to 
lose sight of what really matters to you, you know, um, because we've got this stuff now and we're not necessarily on the hunt and on the chase anymore for other things. So taking some time when, you, when things are good to reflect on your values and what gives your life purpose and use that as a guide for your actions moving forward. Um, if there's ever a better time than when things are good to do that, then I, then I don't know what it is, you know. We talked, we've talked a bit about, well, I've talked a bit, um, about luck in this, in this episode already. And sometimes I think it's important when things are good to recognize the, now I said before, you know, it's not all luck when things go good, but sometimes things, fortunate things may have happened that, that make you think, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Without that stroke of luck, I wouldn't be, you know, achieving where I am right now. <clears throat> excuse me so when things are good it's important to acknowledge the role that luck and privilege may have played in our success right now not to downplay it not to be sorry for it not to feel shame around it or anything else just acknowledge it right because that can help us maintain a sense of perspective and gratitude and motivate us to use our good fortune then to help ourselves and, and possibly then in turn to help others as well. Um, if, you, if you don't think there is a little bit of fortune in, in the good times, then it, I, I think it just makes us appreciate those good times a little bit less. Um, that you think, you know, all this is only because I've worked so fucking hard for so long that I've got these things. And that might be true, but I doubt there's not a little bit of fortune along the way too, you know, which is important because if you're going to savor the moment, if you're going to be present and mindful in your successful moments in the good times, then, you know, that's important. When things are good, it's, it's easy to get caught up in planning for the future or worrying about what might go wrong right that neither of those things are savoring the moment you know so practicing mindfulness and savoring savoring the moment in the present moment can help us to fully appreciate the good times and experience those good times more deeply and and more really you know um yeah Using the good times to build strong relationships is another good sort of thing to think about when you're feeling good. It can be easier to build and strengthen our relationships with others. I'm not necessarily talking about intimate relationships here or marriages or anything like that. I'm the last person to give you any counseling around that. But, um, you know, just being in relationship with another person. This is when it's when things are good, it's easier to build that and strengthen that, you know. So, Use the time when things are good to connect with loved ones. Reach out to new acquaintances, you know, build new friendships, build a supportive network that can help you weather the difficult times that may be coming back, that may be somewhere down the track, maybe, right? But if, you, again, preparing for the battle is easier when you're not in the battle and, and building these relationships, strengthening these connections, it, it's really good to be able to do that whilst things are good whilst the sun is shining whilst you're not in the battle um and, and to do that without fear you know um sometimes fear can really hold us back obviously but certainly in a good times they can too you know sometimes when when things are good we we become kind of afraid of losing what we have or making a mistake taking a risk as i said before and losing the whole lot you know um so i would just support you to not let fear hold you back from pursuing your goals or taking risks that could lead to even greater success and fulfillment of your life you know um complacency is is a killer and it's and it's a very comfortable warm safe friendly place to be in complacency and and in that comfort zone, so I call it comfort zone, right? In that comfort zone, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to keep moving forward and it's very easy to kind of get stuck. And, um, and I don't want that for you, right? So stay flexible, be, be open to change. You know, while, while it's important to appreciate the good times, it's also important to stay flexible and open to change because, you know, you don't know what's coming down the track and you don't know whether 
some difficulties will be coming back. You don't know whether it's going to get better still, right? So you've got to be certain, uh, you know, somewhat flexible and open to change so that you can accept the good stuff as well as be ready for the, the less good stuff, right? Don't become so attached to um, the, you know, the status quo, the, the way that you are now that you resist new opportunities or fail to adapt to changing circumstances that's that's a really important thing too that complacency will drag you down and hold you in place and you know that stops the bad stuff maybe but it also stops the even better stuff coming into your life as well Um, you can use these good times as a chance to reflect and plan for the future right so when things are good it can be easy to become complacent and forget to plan for the future or or not want to not even forget just be terrified of it so that you don't right but this is the perfect time to reflect um, on our goals and on our aspirations on where we want to be on who we want to be and and make plans to achieve them um, it's much, much easier to do that while, while we're in good times, you know. Um, you can use the momentum then of the good times to, to work on your own personal growth, right? When, when we're feeling good about ourselves and our lives, it can be easier to work on personal growth. It can be easier to work on self-improvement um, because of that momentum you can use the momentum to focus on developing new skills building healthy habits um, improving your interpersonal relationships all of those things come from momentum and all of those things and momentum comes from being able to take risks and being able to assess and feel okay this is where i am right now i don't want to stay here although it's great i don't want to stay here i want to keep moving forward right so how do we how do we do that right when things are good, it's important to share that positivity with with others too, like to share your good fortune and um, use that good fortune to help others, whether it's through acts of kindness, through volunteering, or simply just sharing your energy, you know, sharing that positive energy around you. These, these are the things that work to keep you grounded as well as keep you grateful but be able to see down the track that there's still things that you want. There's still aspirations there, right? Um, and it stops you from becoming overconfident that too, you know. Well, while it's important to jo- enjoy the good times, it's also important to stay grounded and to avoid becoming overconfident because that could bite you on the bum too while, while everything's going great. You know, I know that's happened to me <laughs> before several times in my life where I've gone, okay, I am absolutely killing it here and nothing can go wrong. And sure as shit, the next day something goes wrong because I've become overconfident, right? Life is full of ups and downs. We've got to remember that life is full of that roller coaster stuff. And that, you know, difficult times, while they might not inevitably come again, they, they could. And I want to be prepared for that. You know, I want to use the good times to build my resilience and be prepared for the challenges ahead when they come. Um, these are all really important things. But I think the bottom line too, for me, like of, of all of the sort of reasons or all of the things I want to do when, when things are going well and, and when, I'm, when things are good and I'm doing well is to remember to take care of myself. Right, really, really important is even during good times, it's important to prioritize self-care, to put yourself first. And I know so many of us have been told that's the last thing you should do. You should put everyone else first. And it, I just don't believe it. I don't. Because they're all, you know, if you're showing up half-assed or if you're showing up as a, a shadow of yourself, then you're no good to anyone else anyway, right? So make sure you're getting enough sleep make sure you're eating well, make sure you, you're moving, you're exercising, that you're engaging activities that make you happy, that f- have you feel fulfilled, that spark joy, right? And, and this helps the momentum, uh, maintain the momentum, um, avoid burnout, super important also, and, and still be able and ready if things go not so great or if things get even better. So practicing self-care, putting yourself first, prioritizing yourself in this is a really good thing to do when things are good whilst remembering 
that we don't want to become overconfident and have that bite us on the bum um, either. But if we're not doing those things, we're not going to be ready to accept and to really feel how good things can be and will be in the future once we build the resilience and have that momentum um, pushing us forward. Okay, in today's academic paper. So each week I present a uh, peer-reviewed um, evidence-based paper that, that relates to the theme we're talking about. So this is the theme of feeling good. Today's paper comes from 2022, so it's only a year old. Um, it was published in the Clinical Psychology Review. And the title is Exploring the Role of Positive Emotions in Psychological and Physical Wellbeing. Um, <laughs> This is really well written and it's and it comes from the place of um, celebrating what's good. It doesn't necessarily come from a place of everything's going to be crap again, which is nice, but it also um, is set up so that it, it, you do celebrate the wins in order to maybe feel be even better in the future. So that's what I like about it. Um, it reviews the current research on the relationship between positive emotions and psychological and physical um, health and well-being. And the, the authors of the paper argue that positive emotions have a range of benefits for mental and physical health, right? Um, including uh, the promotion of resilience, the reduction of stress, the enhancing of social connections and friendships and relationships. All of these things are what the, the authors looked at as in correlation with each other, right? It also discusses the role of positive emotions in various kind of sections and facets of our life, right? So work and relationships and fun and sport and leisure activities, right? And the authors then sort of came to the conclusion, provide insights into how positive emotions can be cultivated and maintained over time. And and there's lots of practical suggestions for individuals kind of seeking to increase their positive emotions and well-being. Um, but it's really, the interesting part about the paper is, is the absolute proven link between um, feeling good and doing good, right? Feeling good and doing well, sorry, I should say. Um, overall, the, the paper provides a comprehensive overview of, of the research and on the benefits of positive emotions and and then there's lots of valuable insights in there for people trying to trying to improve their mental health and their physical health um, through positive psychology but also then just being aware of when you are in those good times and that's the positive link that's the really good link between what we're talking about today in this paper is uh, the awareness, the mindful awareness of when things are good and in relation to my very, very first point of, well, what is good, right? The definition of good is what's important here as well. Um, so yeah, I suggest you check that paper out if you want to ha have a quick read. I'll put the um, the name of the paper in the show notes so you can Google it. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really valuable sort of piece that absolutely shows the link between feeling good like feeling when things are good and the potential then for increased physical and mental health and well-being um, as a result of being aware of when when things are good, the very the very subject of, of Jesse's question and the, the subject of, of this episode. Okay, so tips. So I, today I've got 10 tips on how you can or what you can do when things are good you know um, things you can take forward so in each episode uh, as you know if you listen to a few I, I'll, I'll give you uh, about 10 tips at the end um, actual stuff that you can tangibly take and put into action this week um, between episodes and hopefully be able to if you are feeling good and you're in a good space um, which Jesse obviously is with this question and that's great for him um, then you know what what can we do to, to keep that going how do what can we do to build the momentum and keep keep the good times rolling right number one practice gratitude daily it's always my number one man like take a few minutes each day to reflect on what you're grateful for write it down in a journal share it with a friend or a, or a loved one but 
Writing it down is important. When you write something down that you're grateful for, you are more grateful for it. That's science. That's not my opinion. That's research-based. So um, that's the first thing. Second thing is engage in activities that bring you joy. Um, Make time for activities that make you happy. Uh, and bring a sense of fulfillment in your life. You know, it can be anything. It can be reading a book, listening to a podcast, um, taking a walk, having a swim. Um, whatever it is that, that brings you joy, um, I'd really encourage you to engage in more because when you're feeling good, when things are good, sometimes you can, can become that complacent thing and you tend to throw out the routine stuff that you generally do routinely to improve your mental health um, or to bring yourself joy. So, yeah. I'd, I'd support you not to do that. Engage in activities that bring you joy instead. Tip number three, connect with others. Make an effort, right, to reach out to friends or family members and network people, the people in your network you haven't talked to in a while. Um, have, call someone out of the blue, not me. That is terrifying. That sparks my anxiety, but some people like that. Um, have a video chat, a FaceTime, or, or meet, in, meet someone in person. Um, to catch up and strengthen that relationship. The, the, the interpersonal connection with someone else is scientifically proven, you read that paper, is scientifically proven to, to increase the chances of positive times being extended, of letting the good times roll, basically. So I'd really support you to connect with other people and uh, build that social connection. Um, it, it works. Number four, practice mindfulness. Um, I kind of laugh when I say these things because they're the same things that, not the same things every week but you know often these things get repeated because they are such good and important staples to mental health but practicing mindfulness is is obviously one of them take some time each day um, just to be present in the moment and and focus on your thoughts and how you feel and what you feel what you can hear what you can smell what you can touch uh, what you know what you can taste sometimes is important too this can help reduce your stress and and reducing your stress with a bit of mindfulness, helps your overall well-being. <laughs> it's a it's a no-brainer, right? Number five, set achievable goals. Break things down into things that you can achieve today, tomorrow, maybe two days away, at the very stretch this week, right? But but try not to put it too far from that because these good times, you know, you, you are almost setting yourself up to fail if you think that these good times are going to last forever or for a year, and these are all the things you're going to do while it's good. Um, you know, set achievable goals, identify a few goals you would like to achieve, break them down into small achievable steps. Um, And importantly, celebrate your progress, track your progress along the way in the the chasing of that goal and celebrate little wins as you get there. Number six, volunteer or give back. Um, Find a cause that you care about and get involved in it. Now, this can be volunteering at a local charity, donating money for a nonprofit, um, or just doing something kind for someone who needs it. Um, you know, giving giving clothes to the Vinnies, um, picking up papers at the park where you walk each day. Um, like, there's a million different things. Um, take three for the sea is a really great sort of initiative where where you know you take three bits of rubbish and crap away from the beach every time you go if everyone does that we live in paradise right so volunteering and giving back is a really important thing and it's definitely something we can do when things are going well number seven take care of your physical health make sure you're getting enough sleep Um, make sure you're eating a healthy diet Uh, engage in regular movement exercise physical activity whatever you call it move every day move Um, and when you do those things you celebrate and you appreciate the good times but you're also again much more likely to to extend those good times out further right number eight learn something new when things are good it's a really good time to take a class or a workshop read a book on a topic you're interested in or, or learn a new skill this can help keep your mind engaged. It can promote personal growth. Um, obviously, it promotes education and, and fulfillment and self-development. But tr- but I think also you don't have to think about a class or a workshop or a book. Like Google something that is interesting. Um, 
new science daily stuff uh you know if you google new science daily there's there's lots of different things that have you know papers that have been released in the last month that that nobody else will will sort of know or talk about in your friendship circle these are these are good things to just spark your brain and and learn something new about um just always be curious you know curiosity and creativity are, are two really great ways to get out of a funk for a start but they're also really good ways to stay out of a funk and keep moving forward so learning something new is definitely um, a good thing to to do along the way number nine practice self-care right make time to do things that help you relax and help you recharge so take a bath get a massage go for a swim um Even just spending some quiet time alone, that's my favorite. Um, You know, things like that are are, are definitely going to help you, again, build momentum and build your resilience without building confidence to a dangerous level as well. And then the final tip is to, I talked about expressing gratitude or feeling gratitude, but the final tip is to express that gratitude to someone else. Right, when things are good, take time to thank others for their support, for their kindness for the contributions they've made to your life. Um, make amends with people if you need to do that through gratitude. Um, you know, just to be really grateful for if, if somebody has contributed to where you are because of what they've done, it's a really good time to let them know because you're aware of it. You, you know, you can be mindfully aware that things are doing well and you're not the only person responsible for that. Who else helped you? And reach out and express that gratitude to someone else. Um, It helps you strengthen your relationships. It helps you promote positivity in your interactions with others. And it builds happiness in both you and someone else, which is a nice little byproduct. Again, you're not responsible for someone else's happiness, but if by being happy and by expressing gratitude to someone else, they also are happy as a little happy little accident or a byproduct of that, then it's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you, right? So those are the tips that I think help us um, when thinking about how we move forward and how we maintain good times um, and what I do and what I think about when things are going well. So again, Jesse, thank you so much for your question, mate. Um, if anybody else has a question, you can leave me a voice message on any of the socials or on the website and uh, your f- question might be featured in an ups- upcoming episode as Jesse's was too. Um, I'd love to get any kind of questions like that and be able to be, you know, I'll just do the research for you and uh, bang a bang a episode out specifically about your questions. So please hit me up with those if you have any. Um, but yeah, if you are in a period where you're feeling good right now, then I'm stoked for you. And I'm really grateful for you to listen to this whilst you're doing well um, because sometimes I think it's important. Like it's difficult sometimes to tune into self-helpy type stuff when you are doing well or when you're feeling good. So yeah, I really appreciate um, you reaching out. I really appreciate um, you being able to listen and get something from this hopefully and for listening today. And, And if you are doing well, I hope those good times keep rolling. And if they're not, if you're not doing so well, then, I, then I, I hope that you can reach out to somebody, build some strength in your own networks, build relationships in others, build some stuff in yourself and, and, and keep moving forward, keep striving to be the very best version of yourself. Um, I really believe in you. I believe you can do that. I believe we can all do that if we take some responsibility for that stuff as well. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Um, reach out to someone else. Be kind. Kindness wins. Okay, see you guys. Here.